After spending a video on actually solving techniques, separable equations, we're now going to go back to some theory. I talked earlier in this section of the course about the difference in pure mathematical and applied mathematical perspectives. What I want to do in this video is a very important piece of the pure mathematical perspective. If I write down a differential equation, how do I know if the solution exists? And if a solution exists for a particular starting value, is that solution unique? Ideally, I would like unique solutions. In applied mathematics, a unique solution is really required to do most problems any amount of justice. In this video, I want to give the formal arguments for when a first order ODE has a solution and when that solution is unique. As formal mathematics, this is stated by way of theorems. Someone has proved that these statements are true, and that proof is accepted by the rest of the mathematics community. So let's start with existence. The theorem here is called the Peano Existence Theorem, named after Giuseppe Peano, a 19th century Italian mathematician. It works for any first order equation where the derivative term can be isolated as shown here. The right side is expressed as a two variable function, f of x, y. This two variable function needs to be continuous in both variables. What does that mean? Well, it means that if x is treated as a constant, then it is a continuous function in y, and vice versa. It also needs to be continuous in this way on an open set. Open is a topological property, which I haven't defined and won't really worry about too much in this course. But it is good to point out that many theorems in calculus have topological conditions. Topology is important, an important underlying mathematical discipline for the formal parts of calculus. If I were doing a proof-based calculus course, it would start with topology and feature topological properties frequently. This, however, is not such a course, so I won't, won't worry too much about it. Then what does the theorem say? Well, I have a DE, but to talk about the existence of solutions, I also need a starting condition to make this an initial value problem. That condition is here, y of x0 equals y0. And that corresponds to a point x0, y0 in the domain of the function f. So this point x0, y0 needs to be in this open set u. Then, under all these conditions, the theorem says that a solution exists. That solution has a domain x0 minus epsilon to x0 plus epsilon, where epsilon is some small positive number. You will find throughout the formalization of calculus that epsilon is very frequently used as a variable for small positive numbers in these kinds of proofs. This domain means that I know a solution exists, but I'm not guaranteed very much domain. The solution might only be defined on a very small domain near the initial condition. This theorem is conservative this way, which in a sense, all theorems are. Formal mathematical language is careful and precise, never saying more than is certainly true. Usually, the domain of the solution will be much larger than just a tiny region, so the theorem will look weird for most examples. But there are special cases where the domain is tiny, and the theorem wants to be general and apply to those cases as well. Therefore, in full generality, no more can be said than what the theorem says, a solution is guaranteed on some tiny domain. Here is an example with an initial condition. The function y to the two-thirds is continuous in both x and y. It doesn't even depend on x at all, which means that it's a constant in x, which is certainly continuous. It's defined for all real numbers x and y, so certainly is defined on some set that contains 0, 0, which is the point corresponding to the initial condition. So the Peano theorem says, I am guaranteed a solution. But that's all the theorem says. I just know that the equation must be solvable. The theorem doesn't say anything about the particulars of the solution, its properties, how it exists, what kind of growth it will have. It just says there must be a solution. It turns out that there are two solutions to this initial value problem. The constant y equals 0 and the cubic y equals x cubed over 27. Feel free to check them or solve this as a separable equation to find the second solution. So in this case, the solution is not unique. The conditions of the Peano existence theorem are satisfied which means that at least one solution exists, but it could be more than one. Peano's theorem doesn't tell us anything about uniqueness. 
Here is another example. Again, the right side, f of xy, only depends on, on y, so it is constant in x. It is continuous in both, and the absolute value shows that it is defined for all of R2. So certainly for a, con a set containing the initial value at 0, 0. The Peano theorem declares that a solution must exist. Again, you can check that there are at least two solutions. The quadratic you would find by solving this as a separable equation, and another singular solution, y equals 0. So I've given you two examples where the solution is not unique. As I said at the start of the video, uniqueness is what applied mathematics really wants. So how can I prove existence and uniqueness? Well, this takes some more work. It turns out that the continuity of f of xy, the right side of the DE, is not enough to ensure uniqueness. In this case, another property is necessary. Mathematicians did a lot of work to investigate the situation and eventually determined a different kind of continuity. This is called Lipschitz continuity, named after the 19th century German mathematician Rudolf Lipschitz. It's a stronger form of continuity, continuous functions but with some extra property. Here is the definition, which is pretty tricky to parse, but let me try and explain it carefully. I have a single variable function defined on an open set u in the real numbers. For f to be Lipschitz continuous, there must be some positive number k, and I'm not using an epsilon here since I expect that k is often a large number, such that this property holds. What is this property? Well, the left side is a measure of the growth of the function, the difference between two values, and the right side is a linear function. So this is saying that the function f is Lipschitz continuous if it is locally bounded by a linear function. Visually, this is like saying that every point in the function, I can draw a cone with slope k, and the graph of the function has to stay within this cone. It means that the function can't have too extreme a growth rate anywhere in the domain. This is a pretty strange condition, but let me talk about a couple of examples. The function f of x equals x is a linear function, since Lipschitz continuity means bounded by a linear function, well, this is bounded by itself. So I can just k, take k equals 1 um, and bound it by itself. All linear functions are Lipschitz continuous in this kind of way. This second is a quadratic. On any finite domain, I can draw a cone that bounds a quadratic. And that same cone will work at all points. This means that a quadratic is Lipschitz continuous on a finite domain. This is not true if the domain is all real numbers, because there is no cone that bounds a quadratic on all real numbers because of asymptotic analysis. Eventually, a quadratic grows faster than any linear function. This is all right, since I'm only really going to care about finite domains for the use of this property. So as long as I can control the domain, a quadratic is also always Lipschitz continuous. Here's a root function. This function is not Lipschitz continuous on any domain which includes 0. The reason for this is the shape of the function near 0. It is a spike with steeper and steeper slope approaching 0. Since the slope just keeps getting steeper, no linear cone around 0 will bound this function. This is the kind of function that ends up causing problems with unique solutions to differential equation, and Lipschitz continuity is precisely the condition that captures this strange behavior. So do we always have to check for this kind of continuity? Well, we have one fortunate result. Any C1 function, that is, a differentiable function whose derivative is continuous, is also Lipschitz continuous. You can see this with the two previous examples. The quadratic has a nice continuous bounded derivative. The root function has a derivative which is undefined at zero. So therefore, it is not C1 on any domain, including zero. The slope near zero approaches infinity, and that shows how Lipschitz continuity fails. All right, that's the technical work we need. It's strange, but it is the missing piece. Here is the th theorem about both existence and uniqueness. It is called the picard lindelhof theorem, named after Emile Picard, a French mathematician, and Ernst Lindelhof, an early 20th century German mathematician. It has the same start as before, a first order ODE with isolated derivative and an initial condition. 
an open set u which contains the point on the function matching that initial condition. Now, instead of f just being continuous in both variables, it needs to be Lipschitz continuous specifically in the y variable. Normal continuity in x is sufficient. Then, with this one extra condition, we're guaranteed a unique solution. Again, the solution is only guaranteed on a small domain. This is what the discipline really needed. This condition guarantees unique solution for many important DEs, and pure math has done its job of providing the formal background to support the applied math. Note that this wasn't an easy job. A whole new definition of continuity had to be defined to make it work. But the community was up to the challenge and came through with this theorem. I'm not going to present a proof of either theorem in the notes or in the video. The proof techniques and the machinery required are a ways beyond this course, unfortunately. Here's an example. To see if this right side is Lipschitz continuous at 0, 0, I take the derivative in y. I do that by pretending x is a constant. The derivative is not defined at y equals 0, and the slope gets arbitrarily steep. So this is not Lipschitz continuous at 0, 0, and so unique solutions are not guaranteed. Now, the solution might still be unique, but the theorem cannot provide certainty to that fact. This function is Lipschitz continuous anywhere else, though. So for a, a different initial condition, one where y is not equal to 0, the theorem would guarantee a unique solution. The initial condition always matters for these theorems. Finally, I'm going to look at a general first-order linear equation. The right side is this expression, and if I differentiate in y, I get this expression, which is constant in y. Well, constant is always Lipschitz continuous, as long as q and p are continuous functions themselves. Therefore, linear equations, at least when the coefficient functions q and p are continuous, always have unique solutions. This is yet another way in which linear equations are nice to work with, are the good cases in many DE problems.